Well, I, I think the uh, the big news is, uh, well, the big news probably is the Black Widow trailer, which I don't know. Have you seen it yet? Yes, I have seen it so several gonna, times. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna pull that one up. If I can get it, this thing to work. So I, I watched it as well, and uh, let's just talk about what what was your your general reaction towards it. Um, I quite liked it. Um, I thought it was interesting. Uh, I talked to some different people I knew about it. I think everyone's a little confused. It's like, is she back from the dead? And I was like, well, I don't think so. But after watching the trailer, I'm not sure. But I, I still don't think so. No, it's it. it I I I'm got it from a, a pretty reliable source that this is supposed to take place. It's a prequel that takes place after Winter Soldier. So this is supposed to take place. Uh, after the events of Captain uh, America Winter Soldier, and this is okay. a prequel. So, no, she is not back from the dead. Okay. I didn't think so, but it, some people were asking me questions. I was like, I'm not exactly sure. Um, I, I do find it a little weird. I The one thing I thought about this is that it looks interesting. I'm excited to see it, but the idea of it being a prequel, I thought, was a little, I don't know. I mean, I guess it's just me. I i, I feel like I'm kind of done with prequels. But maybe it's <laughs> it's, just me. I heard somebody else say that, by the way, uh, with their review. And, and their review was favorable. I think it was actually, I think it might have been Dave Cullen. Are you familiar with Dave Cullen? Yes. Um, I think it was in his in his uh, his uh, first thoughts, which he wasn't panning it at all. But he, that was something that he said, that he's kind of sick of prequels. But, but, I, but, you know, I will say this. I think it would really uh, cheapen. The events of Endgame. Uh, spoiler alert: <laughs> If you haven't seen Endgame, which I don't know who hasn't seen Endgame yet, that would that that wants to. But uh, spoiler alert: I mean, the death, uh, her death in Endgame would be, you know, really cheesy and kind of meaningless if if she's brought back. Now they do that in comics all the time, right? So that's true. So who knows? I mean, but to me personally, I feel like uh, I feel the same way about Iron Man. Um, in fact, it's a weird thing to say this, but the thing I liked the most about Endgame was that that's the way Iron Man went out. Like, I thought that right. was awesome, that, that he was the one that, that, that took down Thanos, you know, um, and, and restored, you know, restored all these people that were, had been killed, you know. Right. Um, I, almost get, I almost get emotional just talking about it because I, I just thought that was really powerful and it was appropriate because Iron Man and Rodney Downey Jr. were, were really what launched the MCU you know, really made them something, you know what I mean? Really made them a force right. to be reckoned with really made the MCU. There were Marvel movies before that, but that's how the MCU started, you know? And uh, he did such a great job and it was, uh, it was obviously his place to take, but I also thought it was, it was emotional that, that, uh, um, gosh, I'm, 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 I'm going with the actress's name, Scarlett Johansson, uh, Black yeah, Widow, Scarlett, right? Yeah. Yeah. Scarlett Johansson. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Natasha the Romanoff. That, that that she died, I thought, because I didn't see that coming. I didn't see that coming. That was not something that I would have anticipated that they would, would kill a major female character. Quite frankly, you don't see that anymore right now. You know what I mean? Right, so right. Uh, I was kind of shocked by it. And uh, it was it was kind of one of those moments in the movie that I think a lot of people like, you know, when I watched in the theater, like kind of the air came out of the room a little bit. And everyone was like, what? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, didn't see that coming. So uh, I do have the, the trailer kind of playing in the background. Obviously, it does look like uh, we are going to see the return of, uh, of someone right there. Yeah. Which I think is pretty cool. I'm glad that he's in it. And I think that's appropriate, right? Yeah. Um, and then uh, we are going to have him as well. Oh. Looks like we lost the feed for a yeah, second there. Yeah, for just half a uh, yeah. So I uh, love the internet, but yeah, you were talking about how uh, you were excited to see that uh, possibly Jeremy Renner and, and Sam Jackson, you know, may may show up in the film. They're at least going to be, I imagine, represented in at least flashbacks. So, well, we I'm we can thinking. see you can see the uh, the share screen, right? You can see yeah. that he's he's in the, the trailer right there. So yeah, like you said, they could be sort of like flashback scenes or something like that. Or who knows? It could it could be them telling the story. You know what I mean? Right, you right. Know, like like modern sort of a modern continuity. Who knows how this is going to be presented? Because you're right. I think uh, you kind of you kind of touched on something earlier. Is that there are some people that are going to be confused. Mm -hmm. So they're going to have to do something to make sure people are not confused. Like have something at the beginning that says 
these events occurred after you know Captain America Winter Soldier or something like that, six months after or something like that. Yeah. Or they're going to have to have some sort of like uh, an intro, like I was saying, where maybe it's kind of like a flashback form where um, uh, Nick Fury is telling the story or something like that. You know what I mean? Um, right. Just because there are there, no matter how much information you put out there, there are people that are going to be confused because there's a lot of casual fans out there. Um, and uh, they're not going to necessarily know, you know, when when this movie is supposed to be taking place. I did uh, I did hear something that uh, I do think that it, one the thing that's interesting about watching this trailer is that it seems to me like this this just has sort of a a lot of it has more of a sort of serious vibe to me. Now there there is a part coming up where where they seem to do have an obvious. Uh, comedic relief character but it does seem to me overall it's got more of that sort of spy thriller kind of dramatic thing that's right. a little bit of a departure from from the marvel movies yeah i would no yeah i would just agree with that so oh uh, that was uh that was general ross there and it, yep. uh, people have noted that he looks like he's been he's been de-aged did, did you notice that yeah, yeah, it does look like he's been de-aged, yeah. So, so people are wondering if this is actually supposed to be some sort of a flashback scene even before the events of the movie, because it's like, well, he pretty much looks the same <laughs> that he did in, in right. The Hulk. You know what I mean? The actor really hasn't changed because right. he had a kind of an older look to begin with. Um, so, But he looks de-aged in this. So some people are speculating that this uh, particular scene uh, maybe like a flashback even before the, the the most of the events of the movie, because it does look. I, I agree. It does look to me like he's been de-aged in this. Yeah, I would think so. <laughs> if there are any parts that you you uh, want to comment on, just just let me know. No, I mean I just I liked it. it. It to me it felt like it was getting back to maybe a little bit of that feel of Winter Soldier, um, which is still you know. Um, Guardians of the Galaxy, I think, is probably my favorite Marvel movie. And but but I'm always going back and forth between Guardians and Winter Soldier. Winter so, Soldier is very good, in my opinion. I yeah, think. it's such and, a great. And, and, and I missed it in the theater. That was one of the ones that I missed. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I, I'm I really kind of like you know like I'm hitting myself about it because you know once I saw it, I think on Netflix. That's how long it took me to watch it. I, I don't know if I was a little, like experienced franchise fatigue or what. But I, I haven't seen every single Marvel movie in the theater. And uh, I guess sometimes because I just felt a little overwhelmed by it. But uh, I was really, uh, having watched it later, I was really upset I didn't watch in the theater because I thought it was so good. I really thought it was an awesome story. Um, and, and one of the things I, I really liked in it was uh, even though they had this thing where Hydra had infiltrated S.H.I.E.L.D., I thought it was really cool that it wasn't like they just made all of S.H.I.E.L.D.s bad. It was like, no they'd been infiltrated, but there were still right. good shield agents. And it was like, you know, it was basically the, the Captain America people versus the Hydra people. And that's one of the things I really liked in it. Um, just, just overall, I thought it was a really good movie. Yeah. I, I, um, I go back and forth all the time. I mean, um, normally it's winter soldier, but I, I rewatched guardians recently. So guardians is like at the top of my list, for, but, but those two are always battling out of the Marvel films for my, my favorite, um, and then usually for my favorite comic book um, inspired film, I mean, they're, they're just, they're, they're both so really good. But the, to me, this feels like we're getting back to that, that winter soldier vibe, which I think is, is uh, awesome. Cause I, I love that movie. So. Yeah. I, I, I uh, by the way, I also like guardians of the galaxy and I did see that in the theater and I was really surprised because to me, uh, Gar the, the guardians of the galaxy are kind of like a, a lower tier uh, you know, Marvel uh, franchise, if you will. And I was really shocked at how good the movie was and how much I enjoyed it because I, I didn't know much about the Guardians of the Galaxy. Right. And uh, the movie, the movie I thought was what I wanted uh, The Force Awakens to be. Like, I thought it was like a, like a really good Star Wars movie. You know what I mean? So uh, th that's the vibe that I got from it. I thought it was like just a fun, you know, like Marvel's version of Star Wars, you know? Um, yeah. And, and I really enjoyed it. Um, I wanted to get your thoughts on this outfit. I thought this outfit's pretty cool. This white kind of, kind of like a white ninja outfit. Like she's got some oh, swords yeah. going and stuff. Yeah, I, I dig it. I mean, to me, it's, uh, you know, it looks like she's going to be going through some costume changes. But 
you know, the, the thing that's kind of fun about this, you know, is it, it, it could have some little G.I. Joe elements where maybe she does have different outfits and configurations and stuff for different missions or whatever, whether it's a flashback or something that's currently happening. Because technically she could have, she could be accessing some of her gear that she has because she's an agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. Because she right. would have still been an agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. She could be um, using new stuff that maybe Tony has supplied you know, that she's still learning how to use, or she could just be using stuff that she has access to as an Avenger, you know, just outfits we haven't seen her use before. So, or, or, or from her, her days in the KGB, right? Even, yeah, even, for sure. Even yeah. Go there. Um, uh, my, my thoughts, uh, or my question, actually, my question is, do you know who this character is? This is apparently the, the main villain. It's you know going to be Task. Yeah, I've heard it's Taskmaster. Okay. Is that, is that the way he looks in the comics? Um, no, he's got sort of a skull face, like Skeletor usually has a cape. Well, that, uh, there is a skull face there, right? Yeah, it's just, it's usually more obvious. He looks way more like Skeletor, the red skull. It's just a white face. He has a hood and a cape, and uh, he usually, he's oftentimes depicted with a shield and usually a sword. But his thing is, is that once he sees someone doing something, he can uh, mimic their abilities. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, so we see right here he's got a bow and arrow, so I'm assuming he's running to Hawkeye at one point, so he's mimicking Hawkeye's abilities right here. There's a pretty good shot right there. Yeah, yeah. And you never know. This could be, depending upon where this takes place, this could be part of that infamous, you know, what well, it doesn't look like Budapest, but could, you know what I mean? It's like he could have been a relic of that and, and have been around both of them, and he's able to mimic their abilities. So, Yeah, that's pretty cool. I, I think that, that looks pretty cool, you know, the... Yeah. the the character you know one thing that i i criticize uh, the mcu about is the lack of really good villains that's why i liked uh, infinity war so much because i thought thanos was awesome as a villain like he yeah. obviously i mean he beat them you know what i mean he beat yeah. them and so uh i i like that when you have a really good villain i, I like uh, loki a lot as, as a lot of fans do uh because loki keeps coming back and, yeah. and loki's coming back again although it's obviously you know, with the TV sh series, uh, he's going to be coming back, and that's going to be the alternate uh, universe version of him that we saw in uh, in Endgame, the one that stole the Tesseract. So right. th that's kind of interesting. So I, I, to me, that's not that's not as much of a cheat. And I do think if they do that with Iron Man, I'm not sure how I feel about that. Like if they have like an alternate universe Iron Man, because I, I feel like right. they're kind of setting up like that might be an out for them. That might be an out with them with Black Widow as well to bring her back but now that she's getting her own movie i'm not sure if that's um i'm not sure what the intention is i'm not sure if this is meant to be sort of a gift to her or if it's meant to spawn another franchise you know what i mean right we'll have to see what what the intention is um and then here's here's a character that i think is this is the the one that i was talking about that appears to be the comedic relief and I, right. i'm curious what you think of this because this is um what's his name red guardian yeah, it's Red Guardian. He's basically the Russian Captain America. And uh, it appears to me that, that they're going to... Like, this shot, he just kind of looks like a little... <laughs> not quite super heroic. Is that the, is that the way that I want to put it? Like, Right. Um, I mean, he, he looks tough, but but I mean, he looks like he's a little bit over the hill, right? Well, yeah, they're, they're kind of... I, I think they're going to have fun with that idea. Um, but at the same point, too, later in the trailer, he's fighting Taskmaster one on one, and you never know; he could just be this lovable character who turns out to be pretty competent, you know, if not a little maybe out of touch with the times. And you know, Taskmaster might kill him, and it might help galvanize this this group of ex, you know, Russian patriots or whatever you want to call them, because it appears all of them went through the Black Widow program, so. You know, it might help to galvanize them as a group to take down Taskmaster. So, I mean, thematically, I, it might work. David Harbour's a good actor, so I, I think that he'll do a, a good job with this. And I liked him in the trailer. I, I didn't have any issues with it at all. I do think that there is at least a little bit of a comedic take on the character, though. Don't you oh think? yeah, for he's sure. meant yeah. to be somewhat of, the, of like a comic relief because to me, everything else looks very serious. Yeah. Um, and you know, this guy, you know, this is the idea of him kind of parading in his suit in his living room. I mean, yeah, that is yeah. kind of funny when you think about it, you know? Uh, but the other thing that I'm, I'm, I'm kind of curious is, is I, I can't help but wonder uh, with the tone and everything like that, um, you know, 
and with all the the stuff that's been going on with with Russia, I, I kind of wonder what a Russian audience is going to think of this and how it's going to be depicted. You know, if, is he going to be sympathetic? Is he going to be kind of bumbling? You know, is there going to be a little bit of wink, wink, nod, nod going on? Because I do know that, um, as far as I know, uh, the the MCU movies have all done very well in Russia. Mm -hmm. um, so it'll be interesting to see because this is probably the most direct Russian thing, other than you know the Black Widow herself. But right. they don't emphasize that a lot. They don't emphasize her her Russian background a lot. So this is obviously going to make it front and center. This is a Russian superhero. Right. And actually, uh, originally a Soviet superhero, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. So Soviet that, hero. Yeah. So, um, so that's kind of interesting to me. We'll, we'll have to see how that actually turns out. But you've got right there sitting at that table, you have, you know, three, three former, you know, essentially Black Widows and Red Guardian. So, I mean, I think they'll, I think Russia will still be well represented in, in the film. I don't, I don't. Cause see, like right here, he's totally taking on Taskmaster by himself, so that's no easy feat. So, yeah, I just want to see if I can catch it right there. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. So that that'll be interesting. We'll see see how that goes. I I do like the idea of of aging superheroes and uh, especially ones that don't give up. Yeah. Um, because uh, I think I've talked to you before. Like that was like my, my one cri big criticism of Batman Beyond was I just never th I just don't think Batman would ever give up. So yeah. I, I do like the idea of an older superhero that just won't give it up because that's just in his blood and that's just the way he is. And he's just not going to give it up, you know? So we'll see how that pans right. out. It looks like a pretty cool scene right there, I think. So yeah. You know, overall, um, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to this movie right now. Uh, I think that the trailer looks pretty good and uh, I think it's, you know, hopefully going to be a, a, a fun, good film, right? Yeah, I've I've enjoyed all the Marvel films, so I mean I, I think this will be another feather in her cap. I mean they they've got a great leading lady in Scarlett Johansson. We know that she can play this part to the hill because we've been watching her doing it do it for almost like a decade or about a decade now. She's been great ever since they first had her in Iron Man two. She's been great as this character. So yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to it. It, it should be fun, and I feel like Black Widow is kind of overdue for her own standalone movie. Um, because I think she actually probably could have held a franchise of her own. I think she probably could have been, you know, two or three movies in, and then her death would have even been even more tragic. You know, I mean, it was already tragic as it was and devastating. But you know, if we'd had three films and really gotten to know her character and really love her and and see her as that important role, you know, in the Avengers, and then see her sacrifice, it would have made her sacrifice even more tragic and you know powerful. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think the only re I think the only reason we haven't is because uh, Scarlett Johansson is is such a successful and diverse actress, and she likes to take different parts and do different things. Um, you know, she did do. Uh, you know, a, she has had some controversy. You know, with Ghost in the Shell and and uh, right. some other other uh, parts. I actually liked Ghost in the Shell the movie personally, uh, but uh, I I can understand why people had issues with it, but. Um, I think that I think that's the only reason she hasn't done one before is because she likes to take other parts. She's obviously, you know, a good actress who 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 likes to take, and she's willing to even take controversial roles, quite frankly. So, um, right. you know, I actually think that's a good thing. That's that's kudos on her, in, in, in my opinion. Um, are, are we good on uh, on on Black Widow? Yeah, I think so. Like I said, I'm I'm definitely looking forward to it. So 